Oh, hi there. Welcome. This is Drobotics. I'm going to talk to you today about synthesizers. I'm going to break this up into several tutorials. So maybe it's not today. I'll take that out. Maybe I won't. You don't know. You'll, you might know. What a synthesizer does is it takes the sound of electrons and it amplifies it so that you can hear it. And then you have different controls on how, and those controls affect how the sound comes out, the sound of those electrons. So one way I'm going to use to describe this is through the analogy uh, between a sculptor and a sound designer. Sound designer being that you make sounds with synthesizers or samplers or whatever. So the sculptor has a medium, which is either the limestone, wood, maybe they put together a bunch of styrofoam and then carved a little statue out of that, and uh, brick, maybe a brick statue or something. I don't know. Is, does that exist? Uh, bronze? That's a completely different way. So anyways, there's different mediums that you can use as a sculptor, and there are different mediums that you can use as a sound designer. As a sound designer, you have the square, uh, the square wave, the triangle, the sawtooth, and a sine wave, which sine wave is the most basic. Um, all right, and then you have a filter, and the comparison with the filter is kind of like the, um, the sculptor's chisel. Maybe they have different kinds of chisels. Well, they do. So they have different kinds of chisels. One of them is a, a flat head that you just kind of scrape, and it's really just takes a bunch of chunks out. Um, another one is maybe there's like a pronged one, and you can take that, and that'll kind of scrape away a little bit of that marble, but you'll still see some lines. And, you know, with... So that's those are the different chisels... And the different kinds of chisels are comparable to the different kinds of filters. There are different kinds of filters that cut off parts of those oscillators, those that sound source. I'm going to use those interchangeably. Um, so that sound source is having some frequencies being cut out of it. You can change where those frequencies are being cut out, and you can change... yeah. So, and you can change the emphasis of the points in where it's being cut out. So, that's a very useful tool for, for you in sound design. So, modulators affect sound over a period of time. And they can be assigned to whatever attributes in the synthesizer. And that modulator will make either the pitch go up and down or maybe you'll make the filter go up and down and they do this in two different ways it's kind of broken down into two categories envelopes and lfos envelopes affect the sound over a brief period of time it's it's just one time that it goes through this cycle and that cycle can be a change in pitch, can be a change in filter, can be the change of another LFO. Um, so it can, it can really do some crazy things if you think about it. The LFO affects the sound endlessly. So it will always be, it, it'll be always affecting the pitch. It'll be always affecting the cutoff. It'll be always affecting the other LFO amount. So that's a really useful thing to know. Those modifiers affect the sound over time. And so because it affects the sound over time, there is no good analogy for modulators because sculptors are frozen in time. Like a picture, it's frozen. Sound is takes time to listen to it. You have to be in your car, you got to be at work, you know, you have to have a period of time to listen to sound or music. With that, I'm going to start showing you what you can do with the synthesizer and how you can start getting involved in sound design and thinking creatively about the different ways you can affect this ocean of electrons that are at your command.
good luck. And may, may robotics be with you.